Right, welcome back and uh, back to you, Dr. Shreve. And uh, we were speaking about uh, the political movements that Egypt has made, and one of them was the Cairo Declaration. This Cairo Declaration has put a kind of roadmap mm. Mm. to what should lead Libya towards a safe haven. Mm. And um, one of the uh, items of such a roadmap was um, how it should be communicating with regional and international powers. Mm. Uh, United States, Italy and France. We spoke about already Italy mm. and France because uh, Egypt has paved the way and the president himself uh, paved uh, the way for the Libyan existence in those countries. Now we're speaking about the United States. And uh, the United States with a new administration, right? Mm. So. Well, whether the administration as uh, it's a new administration, yes, but uh, Egypt has its position now in the Middle East. It cannot be avoided. No, no we're, spe we're speaking about decades of cooperation between both yes, countries. That's what I'm, I'm talking about, that mm. Egypt uh, is a stronghold uh, in this region. Egypt and the United States worked several times in, in, in fighting terrorism, in uh, breaking the, uh, the stall made between uh, I mean, uh, Israel and the Palestinians. We have worked together on several issues and economic cooperation also. So I think that the new ad Biden administration mm -hmm. understands that uh, now uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi uh, could help a lot if the, if the United States wish to see calm and stability in the region because uh, Egypt has a strong economy, strong uh, army and strong diplomacy and strong leadership. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi is a very charismatic leader and he knows how to tackle all these issues, whether it was European or Middle Eastern uh, leaders. So I think that cooperating on Libya, for example, I think that uh, they understand, the Americans, that Egypt worked with Russia and worked with President Vladimir Putin on the Libyan case at a certain time. So they have an interest to ask Egypt also for this cooperation. So if they want to guarantee their presence in this region or in Libya. And I think that now um, the Biden administration will have to work with all the allies in the region if they want to find a solution for several issues like Iran and like Libya and like uh, the Palestinians and Israelis, uh, solutions for the Syrian conflict stability in Iraq, so how they will deal with all these uh, issues without strong allies, and Egypt is a strong ally. Why is Egypt mm. a strong ally, or why should the United States consider Egypt as a strong ally, and what would really convince the United States that Egypt, <coughs> with all uh, it has, mm. is a real ally that the United States can really depend on in solving lots of problems. Why? Because this is the fact on the ground now. Look at the countries in the Middle East. Uh, I think that the Biden administration um, has no trust towards uh, Erdogan, for example. They said it. And, there is, and today Erdogan criticized the, the Americans. Um, the Israelis are, and, and Prime Minister Netanyahu is not really satisfied with the fact that uh, uh, the Biden administration didn't want to recognize the Golan Heights as part of Israel. So, uh, and then Saudi Arabia is not you really... You here the sovereignty of, the, uh, of is, Israel uh, over the Golan, over the Golan Heights. Yes. And then uh, Saudi Arabia is not really... Uh, uh, satisfied with the Khashoggi give think that strength open and then let's not forget Iran Iran now is very uh, complicated issue because we don't know uh, how the Biden administration was deal with the interference in Yemen their interference in Iraq in Syria 
how will they will deal with uh, the, uh, the, the fact that Iran is dis uh, threatening the Gulf states. So the strong ally now is Egypt, who could say, well, there are some facts in the Middle East now after four years of the Trump administration and the Biden administration should recognize it. It's that Egypt is the strong ally who could help in calming some issues and alert from some actions. For example, President Sisi said it several times, we will never accept that our brothers in the Gulf will be threatened by any force. He said it and we are repeating it. Whether in the Emirates, Bahrain, uh, Saudi Arabia, we will never accept it. So I think now that if uh, the Biden administration would like to approach uh, Iran, I think that they have to seek also the advice of some major countries like Saudi Arabia and Egypt about this case because we have some concerns about the interference of Iran. So uh, the Biden administration also knows that the military cooperation, and we have seen today the head of the CENTCOM met President uh, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, the military cooperation is ex excellent because Egypt has the force, the man force, who knows how to use all these equipments for peace. So there is no way to avoid Egypt as a strong ally. Mm. Um, <clears throat> in other words, or in few words, Egypt is an acceptable mediator in all cases and to everyone except very few but that would be worked on. It's very hard to, uh, to excel in that, but we did it. I think that we are, we showed, President Sisi showed the world that there is noth nothing impossible if you want to achieve peace. We've been always mediators. Yes. And acceptable mediators to, I mean, every, every, uh, uh, every file we entered. We brought peace and we reconciliation. And we were yes. We were able to deliver. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, getting back to um, the uh, <coughs> Libyan uh, file mm -hmm. and um, Libyan Airlines to announce yesterday that um, the official agreement to resume flights from Tripoli and Benghazi to Cairo mm -hmm. and uh, the resumptions uh, or the resumption comes uh, on the same day as President CC has received the Prime mm -hmm. Minister. They all came at the same time. Yeah. There were also reports about uh, uh, resorting an embassy or a consulate in Libya. Mm. How do you view such developments on uh, the uh, uh, Egyptian-Libyan cooperation? Usually when there is a, a political approach or a political visit um, between leaders, there is always some approaches on the ground. Mm and diplomatic, like opening embassies, uh, signing some agreements, uh, flights, mutual flights. So I think that this was uh, a message also to the world that uh, n n the efforts that were made before to sabotage the brotherhood between Egypt and Libya didn't work. Uh, we are still brothers. The two countries are avoiding any complications. We have the flights. We have the economy agreements, we have the embassies, the pl diplomatic relations, and we are open to everyone there. So no one can support, sabotage Egypt's relationship with its brothers, whether in Sudan, Libya, or anywhere, any, anywhere else. Our diplomacy is strong. This is thanks to the diplomacy also that Egypt made all these years. Look, a country like Egypt who suffered terrorism uh, all these years, and still we had the strength to keep the relationship strong. This needs a real, real uh, uh, force to, to show to the world that we are capable not to escalate. We de-escalate. We never go forward to the escalation. We always keep the escalation as the last resort. But talking to, the, to, to any government for peace and dialogue is our priority with the respect of our national security. This is our main topic and the respect of the international law. Mm -hmm. Let <clears throat> aside all the economic and all the 
the relations mm. we have, we are from one continent, mm. we share the same borders or the same continent, the same resources, we have the same blood, at the same grassroots. Mm. We were all together for thousands of years. <laughs> of course. So isn't that a uh, real proof to that we are brothers and nothing can sabotage our relations? The Libyans, when they suffered for all that, they came to Egypt and mm. they, sacked, they seek like the Sudanese, they seek ref refuge here. And they know that Egypt is the only country that will accept them as brothers. Other countries put them in shelters and... Refugees. Uh, yes, we never gave them the label of refugees. They are welcome to work in Egypt, to, to invest in Egypt. Uh, even if there are some security concerns, we always accept everyone as brothers equal to the Egyptians until they get strong and go back to their country and rebuild it. By the way, this was the message of President Sisi in every gathering with the youth in Africa and the Arab. You have to build your own country. No one will build your country if you will not do it by yourselves. And I think that they now understand it very well. When they have security and stability, they can go back and work again. And of course, they will have always the love and the heart towards Egypt who had them when they were young. Yes, indeed. Now, uh, we're speaking about Libya and the scene inside Libya mm. right now. And um, still there are lots mm. of, of files uh, before the transitional uh, council yes. or the new uh, uh, presidential, uh, Libyan presidential uh, council. There are lots of challenges. What are the challenges facing the Libyan uh, new uh, presidential council and uh, the government? What should be their priorities at this upcoming stage? The reconstruction of the country, the investment, they have to open um, several uh, projects mm. to rebuild the country because one of the first steps towards stability is uh, economy. Mm. The young people, if they won't find jobs, where they will go? They will be recruited as mercenaries or they will be illegal immigrants or they will be uh, affiliated to some criminal organization or terrorist organization. So the first thing I think that the, that the Libyan government now is seeking is mm. how to invest and how to bring money to the country. And I think that we as Egypt, we, we have the expertise in that. We have invested in projects in Tanzania, in, in uh, South Sudan, uh, in Sudan, and, and even pr productive electricity to Lebanon. So I think that the same thing we can do with the Libyans. We will help them to bring the economy uh, to the light. And I think that they have already the, the materials to do that. So I think this, was, this will be the first obstacle that the government should tackle after, of course, fighting terrorism and uh, expelling all the mercenaries. Expelling mercenaries. Mm. Rather, uh, there are lots and lots of uh, mercenaries and there are lots of weapons. Yes, unfortunately. And we're not speaking about mercenaries, we we're speaking about the foreign mercenaries, we we're speaking also about militants uh, 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 yes. from within. Yes. So how do you view this situation? How mm. can Egypt help uh, Libya restore its uh, stability, particularly from this uh, area at this upcoming stage? Because that mm. would be the first file to work with. Uh, look, with. as a specialist, I will tell you immediately, uh, this kind of war is about the intelligence. Uh, we have a strong uh, intelligence service who okay. provide the info uh, because everything is, doing, is done in the dark. I mean the traffic of the militants, uh, the, the trafficking of weapons and all that. So I think that we will give the expertise about the organizations, how to fight them. And, yes. and, and we have, we have uh, cooperation also with the EU in that and we can help Libya to overcome all, all these difficulties. Yes. It will take time, of course. Regional and international uh, bodies, the African yes. Union, the uh, UN and the EU. Mm -hmm. Definitely, Egypt has all its, uh, its force to uh, 
uh, open up to all these areas. Uh, Dr. Sharif Amir, Professor of International Relations, we thank you so much for being with us thank and you. for your input. Thank you. Dear viewers, many thanks for watching. Tomorrow will be another important uh, debate with another colleague. Good night.